Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homey. Let's take a look at some of the most popular Z-Wave devices on the market right now. Naturally, I'm talking about Fibaro. Now the question I want to answer is, are Fibaro's Z-Wave products the right fit for your smart home? Fibaro is a Polish company that started back in 2010, and they've specialized in creating IoT devices for smart homes. And they've got a good range of devices that fit a lot of homes. We're going to be looking at the door window sensor, Fibaro's button, the wall plug, key fob, Fibaro's multi-sensor, combining a motion sensor with a temperature sensor and light sensor. And I've also got Fibaro's thermostat valve. So these devices are not quite plug and play out of the box. As with most Z-Wave devices, you're going to need to connect them to a controller or hub. And, of course, I'm going to be using Homey Pro. Now, Homey Pro comes with the added benefits of also having Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth, 433 megahertz, and even infrared, as well as Z-Wave all built into it, meaning you can connect a wide range of smart home devices, including these from Fubaro. Now, one of the key features of these Fubaro devices is that Z-Wave technology and Z-Wave technology has been specifically designed for smart homes. So, it has a few advantages. First, it's a two-way communication protocol, which means that these devices can talk to Homey, and Homey can talk back to these devices. So, any changes happening to the devices is communicated directly to Homey and vice versa. Z-Wave also doesn't share the same airwaves as your Wi-Fi in your home. So there's no interference between your Wi-Fi network and your smart home device network. Now, Z-Wave also creates a meshed network using secure encrypted communication protocols. And it means that your devices can actually talk to each other and pass messages down the chain all the way back to Homey. And this increases the stability and range that you're able to achieve with Z-Wave networks. Last but not least is its low energy usage which makes it perfect for battery powered devices like the motion sensor or door window sensors. And it means that you don't have to change the battery that often in your smart home. And the downsides? Well, Z-Wave devices do require a hub. Luckily, Homey's got you covered for that. And if you thought that you could get all those features on a low budget, well, you might have to think again because often Z-Wave devices do come with a little bit higher price tag than their Zigbee or Wi-Fi counterparts. Now enough about the technology. Let's get these devices connected up to Homey and start having a look at what you can do with them for your smart home. So to pair a device, let's head to devices, hit the plus, type in Fibaro, tap on the Fibaro app, and select the device you're looking to pair. So I've got the door window sensor too. I'll select that and hit connect. Now, as I mentioned, you get detailed pairing instructions. So I'll see that I have to press the button on the door window sensor three times, and it's on the back here. So I'll do that, one, two, three. And the first stage gets a green check mark. Now the second stage is to press the button three times again. Let's do that, one, two, three. And the device is now pairing to Homey. So once successfully connected, it'll appear here on your device's screen in the Homey app. Now let's quickly pair up the rest of the devices and I'll run you through how to do this for each device. Plus, Fibaro, Motion Sensor Z-Wave Plus, Connect. Now I've got the motion sensor paired up. Let's do the button. Let's move on to the key fob. Let's connect up the thermostat valve. All the devices connected up to Homey. And to 
to illustrate the plug, I'm quickly just gonna plug in a lamp so that we can see when this triggers. And you'll see that the plug is now active. And if I tap on it, it'll turn off again. I'm just gonna put this down here to move it out the way. Now that I have all six of my Fibaro devices connected to Homey, I quickly wanna highlight some of the key features for each device to give you a little bit more information if you're shopping around for devices to add to your home. Now, let's start with the button from Fibaro. This actually has six different inputs. So it can track one button press up to five button presses and a long hold press for different interactions in your smart home and you can create flows that are assigned to each one. Now, the door window sensor from Fibaro is also quite unique in the way that it also includes a temperature sensor. So I can go into the door window sensor here and quickly show you that it also measures the ambient temperature of where it's set up. So this is great for doubling as a temperature sensor for certain environments. Now it also has a tamper alarm and obviously the contact alarm, which is the most important part for a door window sensor. And you'll see that if I move these two pieces apart, then the contact alarm becomes active. And that's to simulate a door or window opening. The key fob is also an interesting device. As a remote, it has obviously six different buttons that you can use and assigned to different flows around your home. The motion sensor from Fibaro is actually a multi-sensor. So it detects motion, as well as detecting light intensity and temperature. So this could be handy for rooms where you might not have a temperature sensor, and you wanna add this all in one go. So you get the motion sensor, light intensity, and temperature information for certain areas. Now the thermostat valve from Fibaro is also quite an interesting device. If you're adding or looking at adding, multi-room heating control to your smart home. And you can simply twist it to lower the temperature of a room or twist it to the right to heighten the temperature. One negative point about the thermostat valve is that there is no display of what the temperature setting is currently at. So you have to go off of the color chains on the ring on Fibaro. Keeps it very minimalistic, but does reduce the amount of information you have for that thermostat valve. Now, of course, you can always check what the temperature is set at in Homey to make sure that it's set at a comfortable level. And the wall plug from Fibaro can not only turn on and off devices like this, but it also tracks energy usage going through it. So with a hub like Homey, you can quickly see and gain better insight into the energy usage in your home using Homey Energy. Now that I've covered some of those key features, let's explore creating some flows with these devices. And this is where it gets a little bit more fun and creative for your smart home. And this is where you link up all the devices to work together seamlessly using Homey. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is set all these devices into the Film Studio zone so that I can use some zone controls in my flow. Now, I've quickly rearranged the devices and set up my sensors and plug into my Film Studio so that I can use zone activity controls in a flow. So let's head over to flows. Hit the plus and create a new flow. Now in this case, for the when card, I'm gonna say when the film studio became active, then I'm gonna say, turn on the lights. So I'm gonna use my devices card and then turn specific devices on. I'm gonna say device type is my lights and the zone is my film studio. So with that flow saved and now running on Homey, what will happen is if I head back to my devices and turn these two lights off, so I'll just tap on them, then if the motion sensor, which I've now directed at you, senses motion, so let's say I wave my hand in front of it, the lights will turn on. So using these type of sensors, so you have the motion sensor or door window sensor from Fibaro, in combination with zone activity on Homey, you can really create some great smart home flows for those locations like your hallway or your bathroom or your attic. So where you are occasionally and there's some activity, perhaps when you're walking through it or you just come home, 
and you want to make sure that the lights turn on or certain devices turn on or some music starts playing, for example, you can build flows around zone activity to have this happen. And then you can say when the zone is not active for a certain amount of time, that the devices turn off again. And this makes sure that you're always aware of your energy consumption and that you're not leaving devices on overnight or unnecessarily over the day while you're not perhaps in that zone. Now let me quickly add the key fob to the mix. I'll create a flow for it. Now I quickly created a flow that says when I press the square button, these lights will turn off. So press on the square button and the lights turn off. It's really as simple as that. Now this key fob I realize actually has a whole bunch of controls. So in the flows, you might have seen that you have, you can select a button press for each of these six. But for each of the six, you then have a single press or a double press or a triple press or a long press. So the amount of combinations of flows you can create for this single key fob is, I'm not gonna do the math, but it's a lot. So bear that in mind if you're looking for a really powerful remote that you can hook up to your smart home. Now let me create another flow that actually controls the thermostat valve here by button presses. So to do this again, I'll head to flows and you can watch me create this flow. Button, push button, rest. Just one time, check, then go into radiator thermostat, set the temperature, and I want to set it to Then add burn, head down to the radiator thermostat, to the temperature. So now I've added two flows. One that says when I press this button once, it'll set the temperature of my thermostat to 19. And if I press it twice, it'll set it to 22.5 which is a warmer setting. Pretty handy in your living room. If let's say you're leaving the house, you can just tap on it and the thermostat will be set to a lower temperature. Or if you're entering the room, you can double tap on it and the thermostat will be set to a higher temperature. Let me show you it in action. So if I press once, you'll see immediately that my thermostat updates to 19 degrees to reflect my ideal temperature for that room or the temperature that I've set my thermostat valve to. Now let me double tap and immediately you'll see on the device tile that it reflects 22.5. And if I hold on the device tile, you'll see the current temperature, 25 degrees, and my desired temperature. Now you can actually change the temperature right from here in the Homey app by grabbing this on the radial dial and sliding it up. So I'm gonna change it to 30, and you'll see that while it's heating up, that the background changes to red. If I head back, if you quickly wanna see if your thermostat or radiator is on, you can actually see that from the color and the number that's in the device tile right on this device's screen, or on your home screen if you add it as a favorite device. Now, as with most smart devices, determining whether these are the best devices on the market is close to impossible. It really depends on your situation, your smart home, and if you can come up with some really killer use cases for these devices, like with the motion sensor and door window sensor combined with homey zone activity. Now, those are some great use cases for those devices with the exception of the button. Now, the button in some cases can do really well, 
but we've had some durability issues, some pairing issues. We have some broken ones here at the office. So it's not the best piece of engineering by Fabaro when it comes to the button. But if, again, if you can come up with a great use case for it for your home, then it might make a really good fit. So my best picks of the bunch are the motion sensor, which doubles as a light intensity sensor and temperature sensor. The door window sensors, which also double as temperature sensors and the smart plug with energy metering built into it. I think those three are really the basics that you can build a great smart home with and Fibaro does a great job on those devices. They're well built and reliable. So you may pay a little more upfront, but in the long run, I think you're better off using those for your smart home.